Hello everyone. There is a story about a grandfather who was teaching his grandson an important lesson about life. The grandfather sat his grandson down and began to tell him about a battle, a fight. He said, "There is a fight going on inside me. It's a terrible fight. It is a fight between two wolves. One is evil." He lives only by anger, greed, arrogance, ego, resentment, lies, self-pity and sorrow. The other is good. He lives by humility, kindness, compassion, generosity, truth, hope, love, joy and peace. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. The grandson thought about for a minute. and then looked intently into his grandfather's eyes and asked which wolf will win grandpa the grandfather smiled and said quietly the one you feed friends the story relates well to today's gospel but first let us look back and explore the context to better understand the text This preaching took place shortly after Jesus had fed about 5000 people with the five barley loaves of bread and two fish. After the miracle, the crowd wanted to take Jesus by force and make him their king. But this was not what Jesus or God the Father had wanted. Knowing their plan, Jesus went up to the mountain alone to pray. The next day, many of the people whom Jesus had fed looked for him at many places and finally found him in Capernaum and asked him how he got there Jesus did not answer their question for if he had answered it would have caused some jaws to drop it was because after he had come down from the mountain the previous evening Jesus walked on the water to join the disciples in their boat to go to Capernaum So instead of telling them how he had arrived there Jesus confronted them on their motivation Friends even though they had taken a good bit of trouble to find him they were seeking him for the wrong reasons First of all they sought him because they wanted a political leader to bring peace and prosperity to their nation and secondly they saw the possibility of having free food But Jesus knowing their thoughts chided them for seeking and working for temporal food and told them that the son of man referring to himself could give them the food that endures forever The Jews listening to Jesus immediately cited from their history an incident in which Moses gave their ancestors bread from heaven to eat However Jesus hinted that the bread of life that God gives through him is far more than the manna that God had provided for Moses and the Israelites in the desert As soon as Jesus had said that God's gift to the world is he himself which excels what he had given through Moses the Jews quickly and excitedly asked Jesus to supply them with that bread always But Jesus was interested in more than just meeting the physical hunger and physical needs of the people. He was also concerned with satisfying their spiritual needs. So he continued his discussion by saying, "I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty." Friends, by this time as we can imagine, They were all pretty confused and grumbled about Jesus and were talking among themselves whether this was the same Jesus whose father and mother they knew sensing their discontent Jesus urged them to stop wrangling among themselves and instead to believe in his message of eternal life He further said to them that their ancestors had eaten the manna in the desert and yet they died but whoever eats the bread that comes down from heaven will not die then jesus moved his conversation with the people to the next level this is what we read in today's gospel he explained i am the living bread that came down from heaven 
Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Friends, when Jesus had described himself as the one who had come down from heaven and compared the eating of bread to eating his flesh, the Jews debated among themselves as to how he would be able to offer his flesh for them to eat. But Jesus was not talking about the literal bread, but about the word of God. Eating his flesh and drinking his blood therefore mean believing in the teaching of Jesus Christ. But the people were not really interested in a lesson about bread being a symbol of a spiritual reality. They were focusing only on their physical needs. Without being told, Jesus knew that they were grumbling about this. So he gave them a choice whether to participate in eating his flesh and drinking his blood. It was an invitation to a full relationship and participation in the life-giving power of Jesus. Just as Jesus has satisfied their physical hunger, he can satisfy their spiritual hunger as well. But the choice of following Jesus' instruction is a choice each individual will have to make. He said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Moreover, Jesus continued to point out to them the effects of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. If they eat his flesh and drink his blood, he said that they can expect to have 1. Eternal life 2. Resurrection on the last day 3. They will be in Jesus and Jesus will be in them 4. Like Jesus who lives because of the Father, they will also live because of Jesus. And five, unlike their ancestors who ate and still died, by eating the bread Jesus gives, they will live forever. Friends, what is the message for us? Bread has been one of the most basic food for centuries in many countries. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he means that he is the most basic need which fills our spiritual hunger or the emptiness of our life. Besides the promises that the Holy Eucharist, the bread and wine we consume as the body and blood of Jesus Christ, nourish and strengthen us, it is with the word of God that Jesus can fill us up and sustain us in a way that makes living possible, despite all the hardships and suffering. He can draw us to himself because he has shared in our suffering. If we eat his flesh and drink his blood, that is, if we consume his word, if we allow Jesus to live in us, we may not become perfect human beings, but instead we will become more and more aware of our sin. Our ego, selfishness, desire, pride, greed, arrogance, hatred, anger and fear. That is to say, like the grandfather in the story said to his grandson, if we diligently and constantly feed ourselves with God's word, we will certainly be filled with hope, understanding, light, wisdom, joy, peace and eternal life. However, God gives us free will and that means we can feed whichever one of the two wolves we choose. We can feed evil or we can feed good. Amen. God bless you.